All right, so let's uh, let's uh, chat about um, how we can uh, interact with Mongo, but from uh, our application, right? Uh, no notice that we, we mentioned that uh, Mongo, right, at, at its raw uh, implementation, doesn't support a lot of the functionality that we would expect, you know, especially coming from SQL, right? There's a uh, you know there's no there are no schemas, there's no validation, right? It doesn't it doesn't really care uh, if uh, you had a count. And it was an integer, and then but later on the count is a string, or then a count is a date. It doesn't care. Right? Whatever you give it, it'll store it, right? Uh, is also uh, referential integrity or having references object. You know, we're 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 um, accustomed in uh, SQL that we break up the data. You know, to support uh, normalization, we break it up into many different tables, and then we have foreign keys and primary keys referencing each you know each other, right? Uh, and then we use join uh, to be able to uh, join data from different tables and reconstruct uh, the original data model. Yes? Uh, and, and again, uh, Node.js, uh, MongoDB doesn't, doesn't support any of that. Uh, so you can have objects referencing other objects, right? But itself doesn't support uh, joining these things, right? All that uh, has to be done at the application level, right? Uh, so, so we don't want to do any of that, right? Uh, instead, we're going to be using a, a library, right, that creates that layer of, of abstraction right, for us, right, that, that is going to do the validation for us. It's going to allow us to create schema, right, to make sure that whenever we insert something, whatever we insert or whatever we update, right, matches against a particular schema that we, that we have declared, yes? Uh, also, it will provide uh, some level of being able to uh, break up the data across several collections, but then be able to you know, reference uh, amongst each other and reconstruct you know, complex data models across different collections. You know, something like joins, but not quite. Okay? But almost, almost that. Right? Um, uh, so, so, so to do that, uh, we're going to be using a, um, uh, a very popular library, um, uh, Mongoose. We're going to be using Mongoose. Uh, so Mongoose is, is one of several uh, libraries that allow us to interact uh, with uh, MongoDB, right? Uh, certainly, there's the Mongo, the uh, Mongo uh, library that uh, you can download from MongoDB themselves, right? They provide a library, uh, but that library is very is very low level, right? It, um, it's it's almost basically doing what you do manually, but programmatically, yes. So so it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't provide a lot of the high level abstraction layer, right? Mongoose does. Mongoose uh, does a lot of that that for us. So uh, you know, for those that, that come from SQL, uh, I think you know you'll you'll you'll, you'll find you know, some of the concepts that, that are, are introduced here. Uh, you'll find them uh, uh, familiar. Okay, um, so uh, so Mongoose, uh, you can you can install it, or you can read the documentation from mongoosejs.com, uh, uh, and I believe we've already installed it on, on our machines. But to install it, you just do npm install mongoose, uh, which I believe we've already done that. Uh, and uh, we can check to see in our package JSON, and uh, and indeed it says that we have Mongoose 4.4.15, right? So we already installed it, uh, and uh, I went over that this morning. Uh, so um, let me, I believe did we, okay, no, we did not do that just this morning. Not, uh, what we did is something else, so, so I can show you, great. Uh, so what we want to be able to do is uh, is install it. Once it's installed, we'd like to be able to start using it. To 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 use Mongoose, it's as easy as just um, requiring it, right? Uh, and once you require it, you can then uh, connect to a local uh, database or actually any database, any Mongo Mongoose uh, MongoDB instance uh, anywhere in the world, right? As long as you know their IP address or the name of that machine. Right, it'll resolve to whatever IP uh, that your instance is running. Uh, like, like any uh, you are, uh, uh, this, this is a connection string, and like any connection string, it's it's a basically it's a URL uh, whose first part is the um, the protocol. Right, it's a binary protocol that uh, it will have uh, our Node.js instance talking to a MongoDB instance, right, somewhere out there, uh, and and. Uh, for now, both the server and both our Node.js server and our MongoDB server, they're going to be both hosted on my machine, right, locally. 
Uh, but when you deploy it on Heroku on a production environment, uh, that's not necessarily going to be running on the same machine, right? You're going to have your Node.js running on Heroku and your Mongo instance running on MLab or whatever you want to host your, your, your database. Uh, so these certainly are going to have going to go throughout through a network connection, and, and we're going to be we're going to be faced with the same exact um, challenges that we were faced when we were connecting uh, Angular to Node.js, right? And we we had we were going over an HTTP connection, right? We we had to uh, you know, it used to be a synchronous connection when we didn't have the, the network connection, right? But when we added the network connection. Uh, uh, we had to deal with asynchronous uh, communication, right, from the from browser asynchronously communicating with the Node.js server, correct? You know, to go fetch this data. Well, here we're going to have the same the same challenge, right? We're going to need our Node.js server talking to our MongoDB server uh, over a network connection, and we we and, and that connection is going to be asynchronous. That communication is going to be asynchronous, right? So we're going to be be faced with the same. Uh, 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 concerns, right? We're going we're to have to use promises again, right? So there's going to be two layers of promises here, right? The the Angular sending a request to the server, the Node.js server, and then the Node.js server kind of proxying, you know, sending that request to the database server. Hey, they need this information, querying the database, coming back, and then resolving that that, that promise and sending back another promise uh, over to the Angular. So there's going to be two layers of asynchronous communication here, right? Uh, so today we're going to focus on the database side. You know, just play around with that a little bit. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, play around with this. Let's um, uh, create here uh, under lectures, undergraduate. Let's uh, create a um, uh, a directory where we can play around with Mongo. Okay, uh, and let's create here a um, a JavaScript in app.js. Right under here. Uh, we're going to use uh, Mongo to connect to the database. Right, so, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, load the Mongoose library, right? And that's it. That we have it loaded. Uh, once we have that, we can um, we can ask the library to connect to a particular instance, right? Uh, in our case, uh, we're going to be connected to a local host, right? Or 127.0.0.1. Uh, and the database that we want to connect to. In this case, we already have a database, right? And I believe it was, um, what's it called? This one right here, Web Dev Summer 1, 2017. Uh, so we're going to give it that name. There it is. Okay. So that connects us to the local database. Uh, for your first assignments, right, this connection string was a, a, a dynamic string, right? Uh, it either connected locally, right, or uh, if it was running on Heroku, it connected to an MLab connection string, right? To an MLab database, right? Here, we're just going to play around with a local instance, okay? All right. All right, so now that we're connected, um, now that we're connected, uh, we, um, uh, we want to start interacting with the database, okay? Uh, so we were playing around with blog posts, okay? And, uh, and, and, and we don't want to run into an issue where uh, we don't want to forget whether it was title or content or body, right? We want to make sure we have it defined, right? That the fields are these, and these are the data types of the, of the fields, right? And I want to make sure that if I insert or update something, that I always follow that same schema, correct? Uh, so Mongoose allows us to have that, that layer of abstraction, of thinking about schemas, right? And, and that kind of validation. Right? So to do that, uh, we can create a... Uh, 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 a schema, a blog post uh, schema, uh, and we can use Mongoose to create that schema. Schema, right? Uh, and to configure the schema, uh, Ma uh, Mongoose takes an, an object instance, right, where you can provide the names of the fields, your title, right, uh, followed by the data type, right, and say that this is a string. The um, the the body uh, is also going to going to be a string. Okay, and uh, you can also give other other fields such as maybe you can say um, uh, the uh, post the date that it was posted. Right, you can say that this is of type date. Okay, um, uh, you can also maybe uh, have a rating. 
maybe or stars, maybe or followers. I don't know how many people have a, a are following this post or, or have a given thumbs up, um, uh, thumbs up, thumbs up, right? And you can have maybe a, a, a number. Okay, so these are all uh, uh, native data types of JavaScript. Okay. Um, all right, so once you have the schema, uh, this means that uh, anything that we insert or update, it's going to be validated against the schema. Right? So if it doesn't match the schema, it will give us an error, right? saying that our insert or our update is not following the schema, something that a MongoDB uh, by itself will not do for us. Right? So we have moved the responsibility of handling schema and validation, right? we have moved it over to the application layer as opposed to as a, as a data layer. Yes, is a responsibility of the application layer to handle these things, but not ourselves, right? We're using it through a, a very well uh, designed um, a library. Yes. All right. So let's keep going. Uh, all right. So schema is like a class, right? That that allows us to determine how what are the different data types that make up a particular object instance. Uh, but then we need a model to be able to actually interact with these things, right? That implements the behavior of creating these instances, of removing an instance, of updating an instance, basically providing the four you know, CRUD operations, right, that would allow us to manipulate instances of these things, yes? And typically we refer to that as the model, right, that allows us to manipulate uh, each instance of these things. So, so to do that, we're going to create a block model, model. Uh, and, uh, and, and for that, uh, Mongoose also provides an ab abstraction to, to create these models called Mongoose model. Right? Now the model is um, uh, it's a, it's an abstraction layer right, that uh, is going to allow uh, us to be able to uh, create um, relationships between different pieces of the model. Right? So you might have uh, blog posts and uh, comments Right, so you might have two collections, right? You have a collection of blog posts, right? You might have a collection of comments. And, and typically, uh, you might have a UML class diagram saying that, you know, for one blog post can have many comments, yes? Uh, and, uh, and, and so you have one blog post instance having many comments. And then you have another blog post instance having yet some other comments, yes? So there's like a one-to-many relationship. To implement that, uh, you need to be able to have some models reference some other models, yes? Right? And to do that, uh, Mongoose allows us to first register those models, give them names, so that they can then reference each other, OK? Uh, so for instance, I might have here um, blog, uh, blog post, OK? Uh, and tell it that uh, this is um, a it follows that block post schema, meaning this block post, right, model will be responsible for creating, updating, deleting, uh, finding, retrieving, right, instances of this schema, right, objects that have been instantiated using this schema. Make sense? All right? All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that. Let's, let's insert, let's create our very first uh, block model, block post. So block model, if I want to create a brand new one, uh, I can use the either the insert that we saw uh, before, right? Just like we did on the on the command line, or there's an optional create as well, okay? Uh, that does the same thing as insert, and they they both take as argument an object instance, right? Uh, either anonymously like this, like a uh, anonymous object, or it could be an object passes an argument, right? An object instance pointing to something, right? Uh, so here we can say that a title. And um, and here we can say uh, post one, one two three, uh, with body. Also uh, body one two three, right? And uh, post date post date. Uh, actually, let's uh, like this. Post date. Uh, I can pass in a new date instance, right? And then uh, thumbs up. Thumbs, thumbs up. One, two, three. Everybody okay? Right. Uh, so if I run this, 
if I run this from the command line, let's go here. Let's let's go to the command line. Uh, let's see where are we? Um, where are we? Okay, let's go up down to uh, graduate grad. And let's go into Mongo. Uh, and there it is. So this is app.js. So let's run app.js. We'll say node node app.js. We ran it. It doesn't seem that anything happened. Uh, let's go back to Mongo. And uh, let's go. So let's see. Let's go make sure that we are in the correct uh, database. So we're here, right? Uh, and let's show the collection. Show collections. Uh, notice that we have the two that we had earlier, right, to do and to do models. But notice we have a new collection that was not there, right? And it's blog posts. You see that? Uh, this is not the one we were working on, right? Because the one we were working with uh, was not plural, OK? This is a brand new one, blog posts, that has an S at the end. See that? Uh, let's see what's in there. Uh, we can say um, db.blogposts.find.pretty. Right, and uh, it looks like it's the one we created earlier. See that? It says post one, two, three, body one, two, three, uh, the post date, and also the thumbs up one, two, three. Yes? Plus the underscore ID that uh, MongoDB added for us, plus some additional, uh, you know, dash dash V uh, that is not our concern, but it's used for it to be able to maintain some versioning. Uh, of the uh, of, of what has been the life cycle of this object right through inserts and updates uh, also it's used useful for um, uh, indexing right and and, and uh, uh, performance optimization right but anything that starts with an underscore uh, is part of the framework part of the infrastructure you should not uh, mock around with those okay uh, and we can create yet another let's create another one so this one may be um, Maybe uh, two, three, four. Uh, also two, three, four, and two, three, four. Uh, let's go back to our Mongo. Let's stop that. Um, now, before I run it, one of the things that uh, Create allows you to do is also provide an argument uh, that is a callback, a callback that tells you that everything went okay, or 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 or, or some status information on whether it was successful, the insert was successful or not, right? So you can provide as an argument, a second argument to the create function, uh, to the, uh, you can create a callback function, right? Because remember, these things are asynchronous, right? Uh, this is going to go out to the database server, uh, and, uh, and then it's going to come back at some point, right, from the database server, and this function is going to be invoked, right? And and it's going to pass you. Uh, the first argument that it passes you is whether there was an error, right? Uh, you know, the database timed out or um, something went wrong, right? Uh, and the second argument is a document, right? A document object, meaning this was the actual object that was inserted into a database, right? It, it passes it back to us, right? Uh, and we can do a console. We can do console log doc, okay? Right, so if we run this again, uh, notice that it prints out the object that has yet j just been inserted, right, with the new ID, the title, the body, right, the post date, and thumbs up and whatnot. Everybody okay? Everybody with me? Okay. Uh, so, so if we go to Mongo and we ask for the blog post, indeed we have those two. We have those two. Everybody okay? All right. Um, okay. Uh, one thing that we might want to do is that instead of having these these creates, we might want to wrap this inside a um, uh, a function, right? So that we can reuse these things, right? So maybe we can wrap it inside of a function. A good name for this might be create a blog post. Yes, create blog post, uh, and that takes us argument a blog post object. Yes, so we can wrap we can wrap this. We can grab this and. Uh, and then pass it in here, right? And instead of uh, taking this hard-coded object, we can now may put a blog post here, like that. Yes. So now we've made it into a reusable function, correct? Uh, and uh, and 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 also uh, we have successfully hidden the details of how 
we are actually inserting into the database, right? Um, by providing a nice API, right, a high-level API that hides the fact that we're using Mongoose underneath, right? Uh, we could tomorrow decide to use some other database, yes? Uh, maybe we can use Postgre or MySQL, even a relational database, uh, but the API is the same, right? Same function, I ju I'm just expecting an object to insert it, right? The way it's actually implemented is hidden from anybody who wants to use my function, right? So that, in general, is a good practice, right? To, to create a, 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 a data layer, right, that hides the, uh, the implementation underneath, right? Um, everybody okay? All right. Um, all right, so now that we have the blog post in there, uh, before we go further, um, I don't particularly care for the, uh, you know, notice that the name uh, was chosen automatically or automagically uh, by, by Mongoose for me, right? I never told it to use the collection blog posts, you know, plural. And you know how uh, uh, I don't uh, like the pluralized things. Um, so, so what it did, the way it chose the name is that it took the name of the model that I chose, right? Uh, it, it turned it into all lowercase, uh, and then it added an S at the end, okay? Uh, so it, it tries to pluralize things, right? Even, even words that have no plural, uh, it'll add it, right? It'll just, uh, although it's pretty good. For instance, the other day I was checking in, I was using uh, the, 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 the name of my model was called fish, and it, it correctly pluralized it to uh, just fish. It did not add the S at the end. Or, or the end said, yes, fish is. So it's pretty good. So it's, it must have a, a, like an like an a thesaurus or a, a, a um, or a dictionary <laughs> of pluralized words. Um, anyway, uh, but you can you can override that and, and uh, when you're declaring the schema, uh, you can decide the actual name of your uh, collection, right? By providing a second argument to this schema function, right? And and you can provide it the name of the collection. So use collection. Uh, I can say I want to use a blog post, right? Not not plural. Okay. Uh, so if I if I um, if I call this again, create blog post, and we want to create a couple of these, right? Uh, this might be uh, title and uh, post three four five and body uh, body three four five, and this will be. Oh, what if I don't say anything? Right? Uh, I, don't, I don't provide the dates or the thumbs up. If I run this, oh, 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 sorry, if I save this and I run it from my command line, if I run it from my command line, uh, it inserts it. Notice that it inserted the title and the body, but obviously I, I didn't give it a date, I didn't give it a count. Right? Uh, so if I, if I look for it and I do a find, notice that the blog posts with an S, right, it's not here. Because we're actually inserted in a new collection, right? So if you if I show collections now, uh, notice that it's actually in this new collection blog post, right? Uh, so if I do a find uh, on just blog posts, I will see my title and my body. Make sense, right? So I don't really care for the, the other one. I can always drop it. I can just say uh, db dot uh, blog posts and then drop the entire collection. I don't want it. I just want to keep my uh, blog post not pluralized, right? But notice that it's a, it's it's a um, uh, the title and the body. You know, should have had default uh, dates, right? Uh, you know, if I don't give it the date, right, it should at least grab a default date, uh, or maybe the count should at least go to zero, right? The thumbs up or, or the, the uh, so so for that um, in the schema you can configure these 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 data types. Right, you can you can configure it and say I want you know the current time date right timestamp as a default value. Uh, to do that, uh, you can instead of providing uh, instead of providing a type here, you can provide an object, right? Configuration object of which certainly you have to tell the type. Right? But if it's an object, then you have to say type date. Yes. This, just like this, uh, there are, it, it, it would behave exactly the same way, right? Uh, but it allows me to additionally say, 
that the default value for this, if I don't give you a, a, a value, the default will be, I don't know, something like date.now. So date.now, I can give it a function, right, that it will call, right, and then I can provide a function, I can provide a, a my fun function, and then I can provide a, a logic for calculating what I want the default value to be, right? Date.now is already a function, right, which returns the current date, yes? Um, so, I can, so here I can provide a function or an actual value. So for instance, for number, I can say that the type is number, right, but the default is zero. So I can even give it a literal, right? It can be a little integer, right? Or it can be a little string or a little whatever I want, right? Uh, uh, and it will take that as the default. Make sense? So if I run this again with uh, 456, 456, right? And I run this again um, here. Uh, notice that it used, used thumbs up zero and the post date is a current date, right? And in Mongo, oops, if I do a blog post, pretty notice that uh, indeed I have the, the, the default values in there. Everybody good? All right. Um, all right. Uh, so, so this create function, the create function uh, has, has uh, so all these functions have two versions. They can be used in two different ways. Uh, either by passing, uh, well, they all, they all take this first argument, right? They all you know, take that first argument. But the, 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 the following argument, this function, right, this function uh, can be uh, either a callback like this, right, or it can use, um, it can use uh, the um, uh, um, promises, the promises instead, right? Um, and uh, in, in that case, right, we can we can remove that uh, and instead use the then, right? Use then, and then provide the function here, right? And this will either provide the document here or the error right here, function with an error, right? And here would be console doc, right? Or we can print the error. Error. Okay, uh, so if we run this uh, and we add another one, five six seven five six seven. Okay, uh, so it inserts it. Okay, notice that it inserts it correctly, right? But it gives me a deprecation warning, right? Uh, and the reason is that you know, out of the box, uh, Mongoose uh, uses a um, uh, uh, it's using mpromise, which is a deprecated API, right? Uh, instead, we're going to use a, 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 a more up-to-date uh, API uh, for the, for the uh, promises, right? There's, there's quite a few promise libraries that are out there. Uh, we're going to use a very popular one called the Q library, right? The Q promise library, which is, is very popular. Uh, it's documented. Uh, the way you can configure that um, let's see. Let me let me search it. Uh, Mongoose uh, JS um, Q Promise Library Promises. Here there. Here you go. Uh, right. It supports uh, several libraries. Uh, we're gonna load. We're gonna load the Q library, which I have already installed, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. Here's a Q library that has already been installed, right? Uh, this library uh, has uh, an equivalent library for Angular, right? And I don't remember. Did we use the Q library on Angular? Okay, we didn't. All right, we'll have to come back a little later to use the. I think we'll take a look at it when we do security. We'll come back to that. Uh, but uh, for now, we're going to be using it on the server only, right? So we have, we've installed it, and the way you install it is like you install all libraries, right? You do uh, npm install uh, q, right? Dash dash save. Don't forget that, right? So here with the mongoose, don't forget to to install it, right? With the um, you know to do. Don't remember. Don't forget to do uh, uh, npm install 
mongoose, right? Dash dash save. All right, we're gonna be using the Q library here uh, because it's deprecated. I mean, it'll work. It'll work just fine. It's just it bothers me all this warning coming all the time. Okay. Uh, uh, so so we can we can load the um, the uh, the the library using require Q. Uh, also, don't forget to install Q. So npm install Q dash dash save, right? Uh, so you can require Q, and I don't remember what the syntax is here. Wait a minute, require require Q. Oh, there it is. There we go. This is how you install and tell Mongoose, hey Mongoose, don't use your default. A promise library which is deprecated instead use the uh, library the Q libraries promise library instead but there's, there's, there's several like Bluebird is also a very very popular one right that's another Q uh, promise library uh, they're all equivalent to each other uh, and uh, and mongoose can work with either one right so we're gonna use that one let's grab it and we're going to install it we're gonna say uh, hey mongoose uh, your, your, the promise library that I want you to use is the, is the Q library, the promise in the Q library. Right? So if we do that and restart, and we rerun this, and let's insert yet another one, uh, 6, 7, 8, and 6, 7, 8. Uh, and if we do this again, right, it blows up. Wait, what? <laughs> um, set prior promise of undefined. Oh, right, because I'm using mongoose before I declare it. All right, so there we go. Let's put it underneath. There we go. Try it again. Okay, so now I insert it. Right, it just worked just as before, but I'm not getting that deprecation uh, warning. Okay. Uh, and let's make sure that we have been inserting. Uh, there it is, right? So we have two, three, four, five, four, five, and six. Right, so we have been inserting all these things. Everybody okay? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. You can say you can. You can say required. Uh, you can put a minimum and a maximum. Uh, you can. You can say the string has to be in this collection of strings. You can. Yeah, you can do all sorts of things. We'll. 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 We'll, we'll play around with that. Um, okay. All right. So, but so now that we're using now that we're using uh, uh, promises, right? Uh, this. This can now be used elsewhere. It can be used outside of the of the model here, right? Uh, we could actually return the promise, right? So whoever is using this, right, could receive a promise and then and then manipulate that data over there, right? So we can move this then. We can move it outside. You know, this is returning a promise and and then and then it can be handled outside, right? So so for instance, a service layer could use this, right? The service layer could call the model, right, so that it inserts or finds or does whatever, right, and then it receives a promise that at some point they'll get the data back. Okay, uh, right. So let's uh, let's insert yet another one, seven eight nine, seven eight nine, and let's let's run it. Okay, there it is. So it's inserted, uh, and there's seven eight nine inserted, right. Uh, so we're receiving it outside of the function. Everybody okay? Make sense? All right. All right. So uh, let's um, let's move this down. Let's not insert anything else. Okay. Um, right. So so let's let's let's, uh, let's let's now play around with being able to retrieve data from the from 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 the model. All right. And let's do that in the next video.